Introduction, Reflections on Adam, alayhi salam. Allah created Adam and commanded the angels to prostrate to him out of reverence. Iblis, also known as Shaitan, was amongst those angels. Iblis is not an angel, rather he is a jinn who was allowed to dwell amongst the angels. So Allah said, and remember when we said to the angels, prostrate yourselves before Adam. And they prostrated except Iblis. He refused and was proud and was one of the disbelievers. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat 34. Notice that Allah declared disbelief for Iblis, even though Iblis recognized the lordship of Allah. The scholars use this as a proof that one is considered a disbeliever if he refuses to comply to the legislation out of pride and arrogance, even if he recognizes that it is the truth. Elsewhere, Allah mentions that he asks, what prevented you that you did not prostrate yourself when I commanded you? Iblis said, I am better than him. You created me from fire, and you created him from clay. Surah Al-A'raf, Ayat 12. This is the first documented form of racism. Whoever claims superiority based on race, tribe, or ancestry will find that Shaitan is his predecessor. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt with such futile ideologies when he said, O mankind, surely your Lord is one and your father, Adam, is one. There is no virtue for an Arab over a non-Arab, nor for a non-Arab over an Arab, nor for a white person over a black person, nor for a black person over a white person, except due to taqwa. And in another narration, he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was Arab, who was the most honorable of the people. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replied, the one who has the most taqwa. Furthermore, Allah said, verily the most honorable of you with Allah is that believer who has taqwa. That's Surah Al-Hujurat, Ayat 13. Thus a feeling of superiority based upon race, tribe, or ancestry is labeled arrogance. And it is forbidden for anyone holding any amount of Arab against to dwell in paradise. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained, the one who holds a must see worth of kibra or pride or arrogance will not enter paradise. Such a statement naturally scared the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam companions. So one of them said, a man loves to wear nice clothes and nice shoes. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied that surely Allah is Al-Jamil. He's beautiful and he loves beauty. Kibber or pride is to reject the truth and look down upon the people. Since it is not fitting for one to dwell in paradise with this attribute, Allah told Iblis, get down from this paradise. It is not for you to be arrogant here. Get out, for you are of those humiliated in disgrace. Iblis said, allow me respite to the day they are raised up, meaning the day of resurrection. Allah said, you are of those respited. Iblis said, because you have sent me astray, surely I will light and wait against them on your straight path. Then I will come to them from before them and behind them, from their right and from their left, and you will not find most of them as thankful ones. Allah said to Iblis, get out from this paradise, disgraced and expelled. Whoever of them, mankind, will follow you, then surely I will fill hell with you all. That's Surah Al-A'raf, Ayats 13-18. Elsewhere, Allah relates, Iblis said, O oh my Lord, give me them respite to the day they will be resurrected. Allah said, Then verily you are of those reprieved to the day of the time appointed. Iblis said, O oh my Lord, because you misled me, I shall indeed adorn the path of error for them on the earth, and I shall mislead them all, except your chosen guided slaves among them. Allah said, This is a way which will lead straight to me. Certainly you shall have no authority over my slaves except those who follow you, the God will, those who are straight. Surah Al-Hijr, Ayat 36 through 42. O oh, my fellow prisoners of this dunya, has not Iblis kept to his threat? How can you read these verses and not guard yourself against such a clear enemy? Has not the path of error been adorned for the criminal minded? Are you not tired of being tricked, deceived, and bedazzled? by things that bring you initial pleasure only to ultimately cause you twice that amount in pain, grief, sorrow, and misery. 
has not the time come for the hearts of those who believe to be affected by Allah's reminder and that which has been revealed of the truth? Surah Al-Hadid, Ayat 16. Notice how it was Iblis who initially refused to prostrate to Adam, and that refusal brought on Allah's wrath. Allah says, whatever of evil befalls you is from yourself, Surah Nisa, Ayat 79. And he says, with some ill befalls them because of the deeds which their hands have sent forth, then verily man becomes ingrate. Sora Ashura, Ayat 48. Prisoners find themselves in prison due to their own actions. Even those who are innocent of the crimes on their indictments must ask themselves if they were actively pleasing Allah at the time of their imprisonment. Even if, on the rare occasion, one can affirmatively answer that question, does that person not know that the Prophet wasallam said, those who are tried the most are the prophets, then those who follow them? Are you not aware that Yusuf wasallam was tested with imprisonment and he handled that test honorably? Yusuf wasallam eventually was blessed with a favorable outcome. We will discuss Yusuf in more depth later, inshallah, since his story has a special significance for the incarcerated. Yet I digress. We find ourselves in prison as a result of our own conduct. Like at least we refuse to attribute the consequences to ourselves. We blame those who testified against us. We blame our families and our undesirable upbringing. We blame our friends and their lack of concern with our predicament. We hold resentment akin to the shaitan's feelings toward Adam and his offspring. At least refuse to take responsibility, which is demonstrated by his statement, since you led me astray. Those who find themselves with this characteristic trait can consider Iblis their predecessor. Then Iblis whispered suggestions to Adam and Hawa, who knew that they were forbidden from partaking of the tree. Did not Iblis promise to adorn the path of error? So he said, Your Lord did not forbid you this tree except that you should become angels or become of the immortals. And he swore by Allah to them both, saying, Verily, I am one of the sincere well wishers for you both. So Al Araf, Ayat twenty and twenty one. Have we not met this type of enemy before, whispering flowery suggestions in our ears while swearing that their motives were sincere? At least deceived our parents and got them kicked out of paradise. Allah says, O oh, children of Adam, let not Shaitan deceive you as he got your parents out of paradise. So Al Araf, Ayat twenty seven. Notice the honorable conduct of our parents and con contrast to Iblis's attitude. Adam and Hawa were duped by Iblis. Yet when they called on Allah, they said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. Surah Al-A'raf, Ayat 23. This despite Allah himself attributing the error to Shaitan, when he said, Then the Shaitan made them slip therefrom, made it from paradise. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat 36. Notice that they took responsibility for their decision to act on the whisperings of Shaitan. So when they exited paradise, they exited with honor as opposed to Iblis who exited in disgrace due to his disgraceful conduct. Footnote. On a side note, I tried to discuss this benefit with my mother, who is a Christian, thinking that we had the story in common. She totally shocked me when she informed me that in the Bible they have Adam blaming God for giving him Eve, who led him to eat from the tree. So in essence, the Bible's version has Adam blaming his wife and ultimately God for his actions. Whereas in the Quran, Adam displays true marua, or manliness, when he accepted responsibility for his conduct as is befitting a prophet of Allah. Oh, my fellow prisoners of this dunya, the disgrace and dishonor is not your incarceration. Rather, this dishonor is being in prison while continuing to think and behave like a criminal. Pay attention to the fact that although Allah forgave Adam and Hawa, he still expelled them from paradise. Likewise, your remaining in prison is not proof that Allah is displeased with you and did not forgive you. Your current physical predicament is neither proof for or against you regarding whether or not Allah is pleased with you. So take note, as this is a serious issue of aqidah, or creed, Allah says, as for man, when his Lord tries him by giving him honor and bounties, then he says, my Lord has honored me. But when he tries him by straightening his means of life, he says, my Lord has humiliated me. Nay. Surah Al-Fajr, Ayat 15-17. 
commenting on these verses, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, or him Allah said, Allah says that the situation is not like that. If he does not test his slave with difficulty and instead honors and blesses him, then that is not an unrestricted honoring or blessing. And if he limits a person's risk or sustenance, then that is not necessarily disgracing him. Rather, they are both trials, tests, and examinations. So if one is grateful for the ease and patience upon the hardships, then both situations are good for him. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah does not predestine anything for the believer except that it is good for him. And this applies only to a believer. If he is blessed with prosperity and he expresses gratitude to Allah, then that is good for him. And if adversity befalls him and he endures it patiently, then that is good for him. This was taken from the principle of love and desire by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Getting back to the story of Adam alayhi salam, let's examine the promise of Allah when he expelled Adam and Hawa. Did he just abandon them and leave them to their own devices? No. Rather, he promised, get down all of you from this place. Then whenever there comes to you guidance from me, whoever follows my guidance, there shall be no fear on them, nor shall they grieve. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat 38. And in another verse, he said, then whoever follows my guidance, he shall never, neither go astray nor be distressed. Surah Taha, Ayat 123. In explanation of these verses, Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Sa'di said, Allah made four things the result of following his guidance. He negated khawf, fear, and hazan, grief, and the difference between them is to be discomforted or stress over that which has already taken place is hazan, or grief, whereas to have anxiety over the anticipation of something in the future is khawf, or fear. So Allah negated both of these things for those who follow his guidance. When these things are removed, the opposite of them is attained, which is complete aman, feeling of safety and security or being at ease. Likewise, he negated dolal, going astray, and shaqa, distress or misery, for whoever follows his guidance. When these two things are removed, the opposite of them is attained, which is huda, guidance, and sa'ada, happiness. So whoever follows his guidance will obtain peace, happiness and guidance in this life as well as the next and will have every other type of fear grief misguidance and stress removed from him thus he will attain that which he desires and avoid that which he dreads and this is from tafsir asadi oh my fellow prisoners who believe take a lesson from what we have mentioned and closely consider the condition of Allah that Allah placed on earning peace happiness and guidance by his saying whoever follows my guidance also take heed to the threat that follows, where he says, But whosoever turns away from my reminder, verily for him is a life of hardship, and we shall raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. So at 124. So the key to a good life is following the Quran and Sunnah, while the path to misery is traversed when one turns away. This is a promise directly from your Lord. How is it possible that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahim Allah, could be thrown in prison and he died in prison, by the way, and makes statements such as, what can my enemies do to me? My paradise and garden is in my breast. Wherever I go, it is with me. It never leaves me. If they lock me up, then it is a perfect opportunity to seclude myself for the worship of Allah. If they kill me, then I will be a martyr. And if they exile me from my homeland, then it will be a vacation. He also said, if I spent in gold the likes of which amounts to the size of the citadel, which is the prison he was in, I would not see that I have repaid them for this or would they have been a reason behind of good. And he also said the inmate in reality is he whose heart has been incarcerated from his Lord and the captive in reality is he who has been taken captive by his own lust. How could he make these statements despite being unjustly incarcerated? I say he understood the reality of the promise of Allah. How could Sheikh Al Albani, Rahim Allah, be unjustly incarcerated also, and exclaim, "What the enemies of this nation had intended to be a punishment for me backfired against them and turned out to be a blessing for us"? I say also, he understood the reality of the promise of Allah. O oh, my fellow prisoners who believe, take the practical advice of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, 
look toward those who are beneath you and do not look toward those who are above you in status. For this is the most appropriate remedy for not belittling the favors of Allah has bestowed upon you. O oh, brothers, remember when you were astray and didn't know how to properly cleanse yourselves? Remember when you used to sell poison to your own people and rob and kill for your, your fellow human beings merely for monetary gain? Remember when you were worshippers of the dunya, that is, money, cars, clothes, and women? What if you had died in that state? Who is it that saves you from your own destruction? Is it appropriate to question the manner and the means your Lord employed to save you from destruction? Allah says, verily man is ungrateful to his Lord, and to that he bears witness by his deeds. Surah Al-Adiyat, Ayat 6-7. In conclusion, Allah says, And I have not created jinn nor man except to worship me. Surah Al-Adiyat, Ayat 56. The most comprehensive definition of worship is that which has been put forth by Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimahullah. He said, It is a comprehensive term which encompasses all that Allah loves and is pleased with from statements and actions those that are done outwardly as well as inwardly. So the purpose for our creation is to worship Allah. And fulfilling that purpose, Allah decreed that Adam and Hawa would have to dwell on earth. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, ibn, subhanAllah, Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, has wisely pointed out in his al-Fawaid that Allah gave Adam an excuse for his mistake when he told the angels, Verily, I am going to place mankind generations after generations on earth. So, Abakara, Ayat 30. So, Adam and Hawa's sin led to them being expelled from paradise, which fulfilled a prior decree from Allah. Compare that to your situation. It is as if Allah said, I am going to place my servant in prison. Your sins led to your predicament that fulfilled a prior decree from Allah. Just as Adam was forgiven, you too can be forgiven. So reflect, O oh you who claim to trust in Allah. You are in prison for a limited period of time, just as the children of Adam are on earth for a limited period of time. The important question is, how are you spending your time? The manner in which that time is utilized can either be a source of destruction or salvation. It is upon and upon you to, that you have taqwa of Allah wherever it is that you may be. Follow up the evil deeds with a good deed, since the good deeds remove the evil deeds and treat the people with good conduct. O oh Allah, guide us and give us sadad, uprightness. O oh Allah, give our souls taqwa and purify them. You are the best of those who purify. You are our guardian and protector. O oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from knowledge that is of no benefit, from hearts that do not fear, from having souls that are not satisfied, and from supplications that are not answered.